Oh my goodness. All right, good morning, good morning. We are ready to start our meeting this morning. Will the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Brand. Here. Council Member Brandau. Here. Council Member Capriolio. Here. Council Member Olivier. Here. Council Member Quintero. Here. Council Member Soria. Pre Council President Baines. Here. All right. Uh, next is the invocation by Mr. Betts. Uh, can, would you please come up? All right. And after he gives the invocation, We'll all remain standing and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful for this beautiful day that thou hast bestowed upon us. We're grateful for this great country and this great city in which we live. We're grateful for this system of government where citizens have to come and to, to speak to their leaders. We ask that thou will bless this council with, the, with, with wisdom like unto Solomon, that, that they will be able to discern the hearts of men, that the decisions they make will be just. And this blessing we humbly ask in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Next, we have the presentation of the awards for the employees of the quarter, and there will be a reception immediately following uh, in the foyer. Oh, me too. All right, well, good morning. Uh, this is the employee of the quarter. Twitter for winter 2015. Winter 2015. This is, again, we, we celebrate the successes of this organization almost on every Thursday. Uh, but a lot of what we do couldn't have been, ha couldn't happen or wouldn't happen without the dedication of our employees. And we have got a great group of employees. Today, we're recognizing those employees who have been recognized by your peers who have gone beyond and be above what is required uh, generally of a team of, 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 of staff who, who, who already have raised the bar pretty high. So you should be proud of the recognition because it is coming from your co-workers. Mm -hmm. And your co-workers are telling you as well as everyone else in the community that you have done some phenomenal things over the last month and probably the last three months if not probably over the last year. So this is our opportunity to recognize that. Thank you for, for your dedication, your commitment, and to celebrate uh, the team that we call the City of Fresno. So I'm okay. hand it over to you. All right. I oh, you got, got the that. mic. Yeah. She's wired. <laughs> uh, Bruce is absolutely correct when he say we have some amazing people working here. As I read these write-ups every quarter, I'm just always so amazed and proud of the staff here at the city. So we're going to start out with the airports department and Jaroslaw Servansky, also known as Yarek. Is he here? <laughs> Yarek consistently displays leadership and a deep understanding of his position and how it relates to its operation at FAT. He has a cheerful, sincere, and professional attitude. He is always polite and courteous to his fellow workers, airport customers, tenants, and is well respected by all. He is a valued member of the operations team and easily gains the respect of all he comes in contact with. Most recently, Yarek oversaw the training of airport and tenant employees related to the comprehensive update of FAA mandated driver's training program, which was a massive regulatory undertaking. 
and without a doubt, the airport's department is very lucky to have someone of Yarbrough's character. And next in the city attorney's office, we'd like to um, recognize Brandon Collette. Brandon joined the city attorney's office as a deputy in May of 2013. He handles one of the highest volume assignments in the office, reviewing public works and purchasing contracts. He is the reviewing attorney for many of the items on the council agenda. Brandon is unfailingly professional and a committed team player. He is always willing to assist council staff and his colleagues with the ins and outs of the public contracting process, including issues related to competitive process, prevailing wage, and indemnity. Despite his heavy workload, Brandon maintains a positive attitude and is responsive to the client's needs. His flexibility, broad range of skills, and his dedicated nature have been a true asset to our office. We are pleased to honor him as the City Attorney's Office Employee of the Quarter. And next is, it's a group of, of offices that are very small, so we group ourselves together and pick one uh, employee of the quarter. So the offices are the office of the city clerk, city manager, mayor, and council, and the call center. And uh, the recipient for that group is Todd Sturmer of the city clerk's office. Yay! <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So let me read this real quick. Todd has been a part of the city clerk's office for a little over a year. <laughs> he has been able to quickly catch on to all the tasks performed in the clerk's office. He has a great personality and fits in well. Yeah. <laughs> Todd was very instrumental in training and implementation and transition to the Granicus and NetFile systems. He is friendly, helpful, and dependable. He is always eager and willing to help. No task is too big or too small for Todd to jump into with both feet and get the job done. Todd is well respected and can be counted on to get the job done. Yeah. Can I get a picture? No, I'm your supervisor. Oh. I get a picture too. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Moving on, we're going to um, move to Darm. This project that they have a group of people being recognized for actually spread across the city. So it's four people from Durham being recognized as well as one person from Information Services Department. I want them all to come up together. So can I have Michelle Zumot, Arnaldo Rodriguez, <laughs> Casey Lauderdale, and Edward Smith from ISD. Okay, so for, for the Darn people, this is the write-up from their group. They said that for the winter quarter 2015, recognizing one employee simply wasn't sufficient. Therefore, the entire long-range planning team has been awarded this honor for their outstanding work on the, Fres the new Fresno General Plan. During the final months of their outstanding work um, in 2014, this team succeeded in seeing the general plan through the adoption by the council on December 18th. And to do this, they had to work for countless hours, develop creative solutions to vaccine problems, perform expert analysis, and respond to nearly 200 public comment letters. The Long Range Planning Team showed resolve, dedication, ingenuity, and expertise, and we appreciate their efforts very much. The Fresno of the future will be an even nicer place thanks to their efforts. Congratulations. And now, um, for Edward Smith's write-up from the um, Information Services Department, they said Ed played a, a key role in the preparation of the city's general plan. By working closely with DARM staff, he helped ensure all the deadlines were successfully met. During this project, Ed worked 24 days in a row. The streak was stopped only for Thanksgiving. <laughs> 20 of those days included overtime. Amazingly, Ed kept his upbeat and positive attitude throughout the entire project. 
Ed provided the maps for the general plan, including modifications that came in as part of the process. The mapping process included complex spatial analysis and interpretation. As part of this project, Ed also had to learn new GIS, GIS skills to successfully perform his duties. Ed was a member of a much larger general plan team, but he performed a key function lending support to the DOM department. ISD is proud to have Ed Smith as our employee of the quarter. Congratulations. <laughs> Moving on to the uh, finance. Real, real quick, I mm -hmm. might add, okay. Okay. On, on top of all that, I don't on top of all that, not a single legal challenge. Oh, that's was right. ever filed after the council adopted. So where's the attorney's office? I want to give them oh, a did they one. leave? <laughs> oh, thanks, Malia. <Leah. laughs> a lot of great work. A very mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to move on to the finance department. And yet again, we have a group effort. So I would like to call up Bonnie Johnson, Catherine Spavillo, Shelly Johnson, and Alice Gomez. <laughs> Okay, in June 2010, the customer service staff of the business tax division was cut from seven to four customer services clerks. The four remaining clerks went into emergency coverage mode and stayed in that mode for the next four years. This small but mighty team was fully cognizant of the importance of the division keeping the revenue flowing to the general fund, even as the local business economy suffered. I want to honor these mighty soldiers who stayed in the city trenches when times were hard and served the public with grace and efficiency, with information and encouragement. It is an honor for me to work with these outstanding co-workers. I hope the city leadership also appreciates contributions of these dedicated, valuable public servants. Congratulations. Okay, next we're moving to the fire department. And we're gonna start off with Brian Price. Is Brian here? Okay. We'll say some nice things about Brian. Sure, okay. Um, Brian, uh, Captain Brian Price has been a member of the Fresno Fire Department since April 2002. He has led a rank of firefighters and engineers and currently holds the rank of captain. In February 2013, Captain Price accepted the position of training officer for the department. And Captain Price's dedication to duty ensures compliance with training mandates and provides a safety first approach for the betterment of the department. Captain Price also serves as a member of the Fresno County Area Training Officers and represents the training division as a lia liaison during the California Training Officers Annual Fall Synopsis. Captain Price has volunteered to share his knowledge and skills for the upcoming drill school where he will serve as one of the lead instructors. Pre uh, Captain Price exemplifies the department's core values. So congratulations, to Captain Price. Uh, next in the fire department, we have Trisha Gray. Is Trisha here? <laughs> Patricia Gray came to the fi Fresno Fire Department in July 2007 from the North Central Fire Protection District, and since that time has become a valued member of the department. Trisha processes over 6,700 payment transactions each year, along with handling vendors and staff inquiries, travel requests, and tracking fire station operation expenditures. In addition, Tricia provides bus the business office assistance to the North Central each month in processing accounts payable and receivable, as well as bank reconciliations. Tricia's contributions to the department become even more evident when staffing reductions increased her workload to include the processing over 8,100 accounts receivable deposits transactions each year. Tricia maintained this heavy workload for over three years. Tricia is patient and conscientious about her job and the efforts and contributions to the success of both Fresno Fire and the North Central Fire District and are and it's sincerely appreciated. Congratulations. Uh, next we've got, still in the fire department, um, Heather Abadi. 
Is Heather here? Okay. Well, Heather has been a member of the Fresno Fire Department since 1997. She serves as a senior storekeeper and is responsible for overseeing the supply unit, which provides a variety of services, including routing mail, delivery of supplies, and equipment inventory, facilitating vendor services, and managing the personnel protective equipment program. And due to budget constraints and the loss of volunteer staff, Heather absorbed additional duties to ensure service levels remained high. Although these difficult times, through these difficult times, Heather has remained upbeat and positive and has continued to serve the department in a professional and courteous, courteous manner. Courteous manner. Um, Heather, thanks to the commitment and dedication of staff, such as Heather, critical service continues to be provided to members of the department. So congratulations to Heather. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, facts with Leroy Spears, transit supervisor. Well, his is really short and pretty cool, so I'm going to read this one as well. Not long ago, a bus driver used his radio to notify the supervisors that he had an unruly passenger on the bus. The unruly passenger struck the bus driver just as the supervisor Leroy Spears was boarding the bus. Leroy stood between the driver and the passenger as the police arrived and re arrested the unruly passenger. So they want to give special thanks to Leroy for um, taking that action and handling that situation. <laughs> and then we have Mark Gable also from Fax. Is he here? All right. Mark has been with the city for over 38 years. Mark has shown true dedication and a genuine concern for fellow employees and the city as a whole. Mark is always willing to take on any project and the time he takes to explain in detail is greatly appreciated. In early November 2014, the fleet construction and welding shop was asked by the Public Works Department to fabricate steel collars enclosures for the decorative light poles throughout downtown. Those collars are essential in preventing wire theft from the decorative poles. This is a unique challenge as there are several different styles and sizes of these poles. Mark prepared a mock-up unit and fabricated it for approval. After the unit was approved, Mark was tasked with designing and fabricating over 500 units um, of these covers. Mark was given six weeks to complete the task and through his hard work and ingenu ingenu ingenuity, Mark was able to fabricate 568 covers in over just five weeks beating the deadline and surpassing the goal. Mark is extremely dedicated to the project and was able to save both time and money. Mark is a true asset and completely deserves recognition as employee of the quarter. Congratulations. Um, let's see, we have Rhonda Lacey, but Rhonda, are you here? She's not here, okay. And I don't have her write-up, so I can't read it, so I'm sorry. But Rhonda Lacey from the Personnel Department was recognized this month by her peers. Okay. Okay, so we're moving on to Parks and Recs. All right. <laughs> <laughs> And we're going to... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh. I know they can do better. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, really. I thought that's what you brought today. The attorney's office was louder than me. Yeah, they were. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, you're saving it. Okay. So is Larry Gabardini here? <laughs> Parks Department Plan Maintenance Division is in the process of moving out of their shop in Roding Park and has been, that has been their home for over 30 years. The new shop will be located at 665 Fulton Street in the former machine shop. Larry, 
The painter for the Parks Department has been cleaning, prepping, and pressure washing the new site to prepare it for painting before they move in. For two weeks, he pressure washed 40 years of grease and grime off the ceiling and walls without a complaint. <laughs> During this time, he also managed other important park paint projects throughout the city. Even though the job was daunting, Larry always kept a positive attitude and is always a team player and strives to make the parks better. The Parks Department congratulates Larry on being named Employee of the Quarter. Congratulations. <laughs> Next is Manuel Hernandez, Parks. <laughs> Manuel has directed the Fresno Community Sciences Workshop for over two decades, during which time he provided quality and formal science experience to underserved youth and their families in Fresno and the surrounding area. In 2009, Parks was forced, due to budget cuts, to shut down the Highway City Neighborhood Center, along in an area challenged by drug abuse, homelessness, prostitution, and crime. In the five years it sat empty, the center was repeatedly vandalized and fell into despair. This year, Manuel and his science staff reopened Highway City as a new community science center. This center is now the Highway Science Center Camp which is a central hub for the science education in the region. This amazing transformation would not have been possible without Manuel's tireless efforts to promote science in Fresno. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we'd like to honor Karen Norris from the Parks Division. <laughs> serves as the Parks Department as an administrative manager and is in the charge of both budget and personnel matters. Karen is an avid baseball fan and her passion for the sport. Did you say rabbit? No, oh, I said I avid. <laughs> <laughs> so she's an avid baseball fan and her passion for the sport, in particular the San Francisco Giants, <laughs> is only matched by her commitment and passion for the department. Karen is honest and caring, and yet she is strong and guards the interests of this department and the well-being of staff with an iron sword. Her positive personality always brings joy whenever she steps into a room. That is, unless you make her mad. <laughs> then you better watch out. <laughs> the Parks Department is very fortunate to have Karen Norris heading their administration division. Go Giants! <laughs> Now we're moving on to the police department. All right, Jared. <laughs> we at? And we're going to start off with John Hall. Is John here? Yes. All right. <clears throat> Officer John Hall started in the Commission on Accreditation for the Law Enforcement Agencies Unit. I think I'm saying this right, Kayla? Kalia. Kalia. In 2010, John had to learn the Kalia process and complete 90% of the standard in the remaining time frame for the upcoming inspection. Through hard work and long hours in 2011, the Fresno Police Department received the accreditation with excellence. John had to start all over again for the next three years, uh, next three-year Kalia cycle. In 2011, the Kalia unit lost their lieutenant due to retirement, which caused the Kalia sergeant to be placed as acting lieutenant. This increased John's workload, putting the Kalia unit behind schedule. After three trying years, the, police, uh, the Fresno Police Department received the Excellence Award with the Gold Standard, which was the highest award among um, any agency could receive. This would make two accreditation in a row with excellence rating. Please join me in congratulating John for this award. Next is Kenan Rodems. Uh, he just had surgery. He, oh, 
Okay. Um, officer Rodems has worked for the police department as a sworn officer for the past 17 years and has worked patrol the entire time. Recently, he was one of several officers who responded to an armed residential robbery. He gathered information, including the account number of a cell phone stolen from one of the victims. Officer Rodems downloaded a phone application on his own phone and was eventually able to track the stolen phone. The suspects immediately fled and a pursuit was initiated. Officer Rodems became the lead pursuit vehicle and a pursuit immobilization technique, PIT, was implemented. A perimeter was set and all suspects were apprehended. But this is but one of many incidents in which Officer Rodem has successfully brought dangerous, dangerous suspects to justice. Thank you for your great work. <laughs> Next we have Rick Cra Cravens. Police Department. Yeah. Assigned to DPU's residential trash cans graffiti team, Rick worked tirelessly with lead worker Cornell and two other teammates to make this initiative a resounding success. In 2011, the first full year of the initiative, graffiti was removed from more than 30,000 residential cans. In 2012, it was down to 19,000. In 2013, it was 11,000. It is estimated that 11,000 cans will be serviced in 2014. Rick kept a healthy perspective of a routine assignment and realized the impact of the program is enormous and keenly felt by the city residents who had to drag their trash cans that were full of graffiti back into their garage or yard. Once a pop popular canvas for taggers and an eyesore to the neighborhood on trash pickup days, routine cleanup by the team have effectively reversed the negative impact. So congratulations, Rick. <laughs> and uh, last but not least for the PD is Manny Romero. On March 7, 2014, a violent ass assault was posted to Facebook, and the police department received numerous complaints from the public regarding the assault. Detective Romero reviewed the video and started his investigation. As a result, at least six gang members were arrested and seven weapons and narcotics were recovered. The four assailants were convicted of felony assault and gang en enhancement charges. On October 13, 2014, a violent assault took place on the streets in front of Fresno High School between several adult gang members and high school students. Using photograph photographs taken by the school staff and video surveillances, Detective Romero identified the adult gang members and issued numerous arrest warrants and search warrants. The adult suspects were arrested and charged with several felonies. For these reasons and many other soft cases by Detective Romero, he is our selection for Employee of the Quarter. Congratulations. <laughs> and we're moving on to the Department of Public Utilities. And we will begin with Michael Flores. Dependable, capable of being depended on, worthy of trust, reliable, loyal. Michael is someone who is committed to his job and Solid Waste Management Division. He strives to perform above and beyond in his position to make the division a better place to work and strives to provide excellent customer service while working out in the field. Michael has been described by many as a hard worker, a great guy, and a pleasure to work with. Although he is dedicated to getting the job done, Michael is always willing to lend an ear to anyone who may just need to talk. His great work ethic shows his positive attitude all the way down to how he wears his uniform. So congratulations, Michael. Um, next we have Benny Harris in DPU. Benny is a very dedicated employee who cares about his facility and keeping it operating at an optimal potential. Benny was very involved in the checkout and startup of three new hmm, centrifuge units and all of the associated auxiliary equipment. Benny has been involved in a majority of the project 
um, equipment repairs throughout the facility, including the power generation plant. Benny is currently finishing PLC replacement and control automation for well number 3A and well number 6. Benny always provides excellent service, customer service, and he is always willing to help out and share his knowledge where he can. Congratulations. Uh, also in DPU, we have Jenny Willem. Jenny is the account auditor in the water division accounting section. Some of Jenny's accomplishments include organizing the uniform procedures for employees and our current vendor, helping reduce the number of posting days and errors in our general ledger transaction, in turn maintaining our average days to post below the, our target performance measure. Jenny has also been instrumental in training employees in new assignments, helping to keep our cross-section trained and maintaining our strength as a cohesive working unit. She is one of those employees that you can count on to get the job done. Congratulations, Jenny. And we're moving on to public works. And we're going to start with Nathan Sanchez. Nathan Sanchez is a supervising engineer technician at Facilities Management. Nathan currently oversees 17 capital and special projects from conception through final inspection. Many of the projects are highly priority and Nathan has to ex expedite schedules, work with vendors, engineers, and contractors under high pressure and oversees the inspection to bring the project to completion for the stakeholder. Since Nathan had joined our facilities from airports, he continues to take on and complete projects and is willing to take on any new role as needed to help out. Nathan has developed the space allocation maps for City Hall and the MSC to help determine the ISS charges for budget. Nathan is an asset and team player for the facilities and public works. Congratulations. <laughs> Next in uh, public works, we have Adolfo A.J. Santa Cruz. A.J. Santa Cruz is a great example of an employee who serves the city with excellence and pride. He can always be counted on to be at the job servicing the citizens of Fresno. His co-workers agree that he is an exceptional employee to the work, exceptional employee to, to work with. He gets the job done every time and he shares his technical and professional expertise with all involved. He handles numerous projects and is always willing to step forward to take on additional responsibilities. In addition, in addition AJ is a valuable member of the per Public Works team and has received several compliments due to his helpfulness and professionalism he brings to the job every day. Congratulations and keep up the good work, AJ. And finally, Chris Ornalis. Ornalis. Is Chris here? Chris is a street maintenance lead worker on, con on the concrete crew. He has been part of the street maintenance team since 2000. He is a hard worker, is good with our customers, and is reliable and forward thinking. Chris is typically the first person in and the last person out on concrete projects. He takes the extra steps to ensure the job gets goes smooth and safe, and he pays attention to the small details that could otherwise go unnoticed. He's a team player, works well with others, and is very talented in all phases of street maintenance. Great job, Chris. So uh, that is the end of the ceremony, and so you are all invited to go out in the foyer and enjoy some refreshments. We appreciate you.
area especially. So very excited to be there. Wanted to invite the public. Wanted to invite my council colleagues to come out uh, to this great American um, park opening. And uh, it's, it's something that's been a long time coming for the, the people who live in the city and very proud to, uh, to be able to announce this. So you're, you're all invited. Are there a question? Councilman Olivier. Yes. Representing north of Shaw. Yes. Citizens all be there. Okay. That's good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just want to add, it, I think four years ago, or for, for a lot of us who were here, have been here over the last four or five years, if anyone had stood up and had said something that we would be looking at a time where we'd be opening a new park, having another park in northwest Fresno under construction, and a park in the downtown area soon to be under construction within the next four to five months, you probably would all look at me and say we're crazy, or I'm crazy. Uh, but fortunately, uh, given the, the work of the Parks Department and some um, additional support from the mayor when it came to the state of California, we were blessed to receive probably close to eight and a half million dollars in Prop 84 grants. Part of the grant was three million dollars for Martin Ray Riley, uh, another two million dollars or so for the Cultural Arts District Park in downtown, and then five million dollars uh, for the Universal Accessible Park. And I know if Council Member Zhang was here, he'd be He's very pleased because both these two parks, in particular the UAP and Martin Ray Riley, uh, have been have a long, as George would point out, sorted past. Um, but it, it is it is great to be there. I will be there Saturday, and I will be uh, one of those things as a city manager and a former parks director. Uh, I am going to take great pleasure in dedicating this park and, and the future of, of uh, uh, parks in our community. Because as you've heard me say on more than one occasion. Um, investment in our green space, investments in our, our parks uh, is an investment in our neighborhoods. And you will have an item, I believe, on the agenda, I think it's either, I think it's next week, in which you will see a continuation of a practice where we are going to be uh, requesting council to uh, authorize us to seek uh, another grant in which we will be investing probably 1.5 million or more into a number of our existing parks, dealing with a very, very long list of deferred capital improvements that many of our older community center and parks need. So this is a great, this is gonna be great. We're gonna be opening a, a new park and then next week approving additional grant dollars to improve the parks that we already own. So thank you. And thanks, Bruce. And just wanted to follow up, the Parker will be there, the Grizzlies will be there, uh, the Fuego will be there. Uh, we have a new uh, ladies soccer league starting up in Fresno, they're going to be out there. Again, music, food. The, the, one of the things that the administration told me was if you want to open a park, then you have to get uh, the maintenance sponsored because we need some help still. I mean, we're, we're not awash in cash by any means. And so we were very fortunate to have uh, two companies, Walmart and Iritech, uh step up to sponsor the maintenance of the parks. We were able to build it with no city funds from our general fund, came in under budget, and then we were able to sponsor uh, at least for the the next few years, the maintenance of this park. So, it's it's really um, it's really a tribute to all the hard work that uh, that staff did on this because uh, to be able to do to offer this kind of an amenity and do so much without hitting the general fund, and, and we couldn't hit the general fund for this. It's it's just really a tribute to everybody's hard work. And Bruce, thank you, and and Manuel and Irma, thank you, and uh, we'll see you. Everybody out there on Saturday morning. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Olivier. No other council members punched up? Okay. I have a couple of things if there is no one else. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do is, uh, as I was uh, coming back in from uh, out of town last night uh, on my, uh, my layovers, I was able to kind of track Fresno News and, and was really... Uh, want to express my deep, deep and sincere appreciation to our firefighters uh, that saved three uh, children under the age of five uh, just a few days ago. Um, I, I just thought the work was tremendous. Uh, I think it's a testament to the bravery of our fire department, uh, even though we're short staffed, even though we don't have everything we'd like to have, uh, they are still doing an outstanding job. And I wanted to make sure that they heard that, uh, make sure that the citizens of Fresno know that we are very, very grateful uh, to uh, their bravery and their effort. So 
Uh, it was one of the very first things that my wife told me about when I walked through the door. Um, you know, made me watch the video and everything. I thought it was awesome. So just wanted to extend that as my, my first comments to our staff and our firefighters, our fire department, uh, and, and, their, and their bravery and, you know, saving lives. I mean, it was, a, was an awesome effort. Uh, and, and finally, I just want to say that this, this, uh, this past week I was uh, in Washington, D.C. You know, I was invited there to, to the White House to attend the My Brother's Keeper initiative uh, uh, update. The trip, unfortunately, the, the meeting at the uh, set of all day meetings at uh, the White House was rescheduled uh, because of most of you are aware of the snow, the snowstorms that were happening on the eastern seaboard. So most of the uh, participants that were coming uh, from the east coast could not make it and they couldn't even leave their airport. So they rescheduled the trip. But I, nonetheless, we had a, we had a great time. We were able to meet with our congressman, uh, one of our congressmen in the area, Jim Costa. We were able to uh, meet with some folks regarding economic development uh, that we love to to see uh, some economic development tools that we want to try to bring here to Fresno. Uh, and we met with, of course, some water folks. Uh, so I think we, despite not being able to go to the um, the White House on our plan trip, we were able to get in subsequent meetings that I think were very beneficial. So just wanted to report to the council on that. All right. Madam Clerk, are there any changes to the minutes? There's no changes, but I do want to mention that um, the 830 item, which starts on page 6, item 15088, has been continued to February 26 at 10 o'clock. Okay. I'll make note of that. It's the 830 item? Yes. It's highlighted in the agenda. All right, no other, no other changes? No more changes. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve uh, the minutes? Yes. Oh, do, we, do we have a second? second? All right, we have a motion by Councilmember Brandau, second by Councilmember Soria. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Uh, Next is the consent calendar. Do we have any member of the public that would like to speak on any items on the consent calendar? All right, seeing none, we will bring it back to the, di to the dais. Do we have any council members that would like to pull any items from the consent calendar? All right, first up we have council member Soria. That's one, one I. I. Okay, we're gonna pull item one I. Councilmember Brando. I'd like to pull item 1C. And item 1C. All right, so let the record reflect that we will have 1I and 1C uh, pulled from, from this agenda, uh, from the consent calendar. Any other council members? All right, so do we have a motion to approve the balance of the consent calendar? Second. All right, second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. All opposed? All right, most passes 6-1. So first up, we will have item 1I. We have staff here. Good morning, Council President, members of the City Council, Jennifer Clark, uh, Development and Resource Management Director. Um, this morning, I appreciate you pulling item uh, 1I. We are requesting a minor modification of that item regarding the Emergency Solutions Grant Program. Uh, at your places is a memo, um, and I'm going to read it into the record. On December 20th, 2014, a notice was published identifying awards to West Care California, Inc. in the amount of $269,008 and Marjorie Mason Center in the amount of $100,000. The 30-day public comment period began on December 21st, 2014 and ended on January 21st, 2015. Uh, the requests uh, of the proposals, response to proposals for Emergency Solutions Grant Program um, were received in December and were reviewed by a combination panel of uh, city staff, a member of the Executive Committee of the Fresno Madera Continuum of Care, a member of the Fresno County Department of Social Services, and a technical consultant which has been uh, assigned to us by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to ensure that the city is meeting its technical requirements as related to the Emergency Solutions Grant Program. 
Uh, after thorough analysis under the recommendation of the HUD technical consultant, um, the Fresno Madera Continuum of Care requested that the award to West Care California be increased from $269,008 to $385,962 for the purposes of funding activities related to the 25 Cities Initiative to End Chronic and Veterans Homelessness by 2015. The funds will be used for navigation and housing matching, bridge housing, rapid rehousing, and case management services. Last night, the Housing and Community Development Commission met and uh, recommended to the City of Council to amend the contract award for West Care California, Inc. Um, their uh, actual item is uh, recommend the approval of the 2012-2013 Emergency Solutions Grant Program funding to the Marjorie Mason Center in the amount of $100,000 for emergency shelter and West Care California, Inc. in the amount not to exceed $385,962 for rapid rehousing and homeless prevention and authorize uh, the city manager to execute ESG agreements with the Marjorie Mason Center and West Care subject to city attorney approval as to form. Um, a representative of the Fresno Madera Continuum of Care is present for any questions and I'm also present if you have any questions. Thank you. I do have a couple questions. Just, just for clarification, um, I know that these um, programs are very worthy of um, the funds that are going to be allocated. I just want to give a better sense of how you guys um, came to a determination of the 116,954, which was additional um, to the original granted amount. Um, you know, just getting for me because I'm new, getting this at the very last minute, at early in, you know, into the meeting. Um, I'm just like trying to, to figure it out. So I'd appreciate some information ahead of time. Absolutely. Um, Cause I did have also a question. So one, um, how did we get to that amount? And then two, I know that there's still a balance right left. Um, Cause with the additional amount, it brings us up to $485,962. I'm just wondering um, the remaining balance to get us to the 528 that were available. What happens to that those funds? Um, and I'm just trying to figure out the, how did you guys determine that 116? So um, when uh, last fall, the council had a couple of meetings um, regarding the emergency solutions grant program, the annual action plan, which identified the categories um, for which we would be funding uh, subrecipient agreements. Subrecipient agreements are for agencies who will actually be carrying out the activities of um, street outreach or emergency shelter, homelessness prevention, rapid rehousing, tenant-based rental assistance, um, and then we also have categories related to um, HMIS. So there is a management or a, an information system that is required by HUD for us to um, keep track of not only the clients who we serve, but the agencies who participate in the Emergency Solutions Grant Program must also participate in that as well. So um, we allocated $50,000 in our um, annual action plan budget to pay for that. A portion will be will go through those subrecipient agencies, and a portion will be paid by the city to the subcontractor. There is a um, sole source contractor who provides that service for the entire um, continuum of care. Um, so the, um, the balance, the remaining balance, um, is for the HMIS and for um, our um, uh, internal administration of the program. So 7.5% of the total program, about $44,000, can be spent um, on administration, and that's really our programmatic compliance for um, reporting to Housing and Urban Development for monitoring the subrecipient contracts and for uh, meeting and consulting with the continuum of care. Um, so the item that you passed, 1A, is actually the, the match, uh, provides a portion of the, the match that's required for that administration, and the other portion would come through this. So the full 528000 is accounted for in administration HMIS, which are both internal services, so we're not awarding that out to subcontract or subrecipient agreements. And then the remainder um, is for uh, subrecipients to carry out the actual work of ESG. One other question. Um, 
In terms of the RFP, does the RFP get amended, um, resubmitted, or how does, when we have a change like this? So um, the RFP is written in such a way that the city has the opportunity to add additional funds or to reduce the, the requested amount. Typically, requests for proposals are oversubscribed. So you receive more requests than you receive uh, proposals for, or, excuse me, you receive more requests for the funding in the proposals than you actually have funding available. In this particular instance, um, we actually received um, less mm -hmm. uh, in, in requested dollars from the agencies than was available. Um, in the proposal, it does allow the city to increase those awards if they meet the programmatic requirements of ESG and they meet the intent of the annual action plan for the city. Um, the last time we awarded contracts, the city actually doubled the awards to the agencies. We're not increasing it uh, by that much but this is an opportunity for us to increase that award. I would note that the West Care application is a consortium of West Care California, Turning Point, and Pavarello House. So they're jointly working together, but the lead agency is West Care. And um, they have provided an, a new budget, new matching uh, documentation to show that they have the ability to match that increased award. I, w I would just appreciate that information as much um, in advance as possible. We, we would, uh, absolutely, absolutely. The, the HCDC met last night, so I apologize for the lateness of, of the information. Thank you. Thank you. That's member Brandau. Brandau? Or Brandau, sorry. <clears throat> All right, Jennifer, who is the representative of FC FMCOC here today? Um, Doreen Ely is, is here if you have any specific questions and Doreen's Doreen, can right I ask here. A, can I ask a couple questions, please? Thank you. Thank, thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning. So what, what types of things is WestCare real, uh, really provide with this money so that the, um, that the public and those listening on, on cable can understand mm -hmm. what this money gets spent on, mm -hmm. real hard assets? What, what types of things? Definitely. There's going to be some, with these dollars, there's definitely going to be some rapid rehousing, so meaning taking someone from the streets and immediately putting them into housing and then doing case management around them so that they can sustain their housing over time. Um, there will be some housing location. You know, it was really very difficult for homeless individuals to find housing. Um, so there will be someone to assist them in doing that. There will be someone to assist them in linking them to all of the different services that are around in the area. So um, mental health, if that's what they need, substance abuse, if that's what they need, increasing their income or obtaining income, if that's what they need, so those activities. Uh, there will be some outreach activities. Um, it's a, a lot of times homeless individuals don't come to you. You need to go out to them. And within outreach, we're meeting people exactly where they are, engaging them in exactly what they need at that particular time. Along with that comes some document retrieval. As you know, in order to do any service, you need to provide some documentation saying who you are, etc. So West Care, along with Turning Point and the um, Pavarello House, will all be working together with the continuum of care to provide all of these services to individuals. So the rapid rehousing part, mm -hmm. what, what is that? Uh, as I said, it's just about taking someone from the street and putting them into an apartment. An okay. actual apartment and then putting services around them okay. and paying the rent. So it's got more to do with the personnel of getting them into an apartment it's rather both. than the apartments themselves? Or It's, it's both. Oh, it's it's both. the personnel to get them in and it's the rental assistance for them to be in. Okay. It's both. Because rapid rehousing, you can pay for tenant-based rental assistance for up to two years. All right. Okay, cool. Hey, thank you very much. I no appreciate problem. it. Yeah. Any other questions? I don't see any. Thank Thanks, you. Doreen. Councilmember Brandau, you satisfied? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Uh, do we have any council member that would like to make a motion for this item? Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? What is the motion for? To, to approve. You want to approve uh, staff recommendation? So, for, is that, and that changes the amount to the higher amount? Right. Okay. I just want to know what it was for. Sure. And we have a first and we have a second. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? All right, item passes 7-0. Thank you, staff. We have one other item that was pulled, 1C. 
But I think, Councilman Brandau, the way you want to do this is you'd like for us to have the presentation by the Fresno uh, yeah, the T-bid the, the first, yeah, which and then we have an item 3A that we're going to hear from them in a little bit. So I thought. Well, well what I was going to do, if you want, is jump it, jump it forward now, so we can hear the, <laughs> hear the workshop now, and then thinking. contemplate your item. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. If we're if we're ready to hear the workshop, item 3A will go a little bit out of order, so to speak. But we we kind of figured if we could hear that first, and then um, uh, take the vote on the item, it, it may it make make a little bit more sense to us up here. So, thanks, staff. Thank you. Good morning, Good morning. Um, Council President Baines, members of this council and city administration. Uh, thank you for allowing us to come back again and update you on what we're doing at the Fresno Clovis Convention and Visitors Bureau. I'm going to um, do a short presentation and then if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. I have from our staff here, I have our Vice President of Operations, Gay Fontana, and also, because of course nobody can do this alone, it takes all of us, and Danny Griffith, who is our uh, Operations and Social Media Supervisor. Okay. So the last time we were here, is this on okay? okay. The last time we were here, um, we informed the City Council about the functions of the Fresno Clovis Convention and Visitors Bureau. We shared the impact of destination marketing in the local economy through visitor spending, and we um, looked at expanding the partnership bef between the Fresno City, City of Fresno, I'm sorry, and the Fresno Clovis Convention and Visitors Bureau. And um, so since that time, we have received... Um, well, let me, I'll go back again, because I know um, Council Member Surya, I, welcome. Anyway, and I, I uh, will be happy to get, you know, do the full presentation for you at any time also, if you'd like me to do that, to go back. But I did want to um, show that we are uh, primarily funded by a Tourism Business Improvement District, and it's uh, a 1% currently assessment fee collected by the hotels and motels in the cities of Fresno and Clovis. And we currently have 87 hotel properties in Fresno. Uh, the FCCVB and the City of Fresno have a memorandum of understanding, which we'll talk about a little bit later, that was set up in which the TBID monies are collected by the hotels and motels and sent to the city and then passed on to the FCCVB less 1% administrative costs. Due to the structure of our funding, the TBID Board of Directors is comprised of 21 seats. 14 of those seats are held by hoteliers. One with the California Restaurant Association Fresno chapter, two attractions, one Fresno Convention and Entertainment Center, uh, which would be the general manager, Bill Overfelt, one Fresno County seat, one City of Clovis, and of course one from the City of Fresno. Currently, um, Amy Fuentes has been sitting on, uh, covering the City of Fresno seat, um, and I know Renee is going to be covering that again while she's out on maternity leave. So our funding, 87% 80 of our funding right now is through the Tourism Business Improvement District. 10% now comes from the City of Fresno through a partnership um, with $100,000 that was given to us this last year to uh, provide a convention sales manager. And 3% comes from membership. Our, our vision... And what we found um, as we've done more research and added more salespeople is that we really need to market Fresno County as a destination for conventions and sporting events because that's what we do best. The Fresno Clovis event market is dominated by two major categories, sports and associations. So as you can see on this next chart, our primary markets are sports by far, and associations is growing, and we know that'll grow even more, the con convention association business with a uh, designated person for convention sales. Um, as a matter of fact, at this time, that new convention sales manager is in Birmingham, Alabama. He's at the RCMA conference. It's a huge religious conference. So he hit the ground running on December 1st, and he's at his first trade show. Um, this, this chart here shows the top eight markets. Um, so there's another 3,900 uh, room nights that are kind of mixed, you know, whether it's a wedding here or there, those kinds of things that might be a large one at the convention center. But these are the top eight markets that we are currently seeing here um, at the Convention Bureau. And then I brought back this, this little chart here, and I call that our marketing plan because we continue to market uh, the Fresno Clovis region um, by producing a visitor's guide through social media, print advertising, 
bid fees, broadcast, collateral, digital, trade shows, our website, playfresno.org, outdoor advertising, membership, research, and then, of course, a marketing plan. And we did just um, have our marketing plan approved for 2015 through our board, so I'll be happy to share that with all of you. If you'd like a copy of that, I'll send it to you digitally if, you, if you'd like. On the next page, I, want it, I love this map, which Danny, of course, designed for us. And it just shows these are the trade shows that we are currently signed up for for this year, for 2015. And um, as I said, the RCMA Emerge, which is in Birmingham, Alabama, is on the right side there. And you'll see um, that that's where our convention sales manager is currently at. In addition, our salespeople are also, um, through their contract with us, they are also to attend 24 total sales missions. So we have four salespeople. Um, they are to attend at least six sales missions per year, one, one every other month or, or to every month. It just depends on where they're going. And these sales missions are a follow-up to the trade shows that they go to and also um, for their prospecting. So primarily the markets that we do these sales missions in are the Bay Area and Sacramento and a little bit in Southern California. But we are very successful in Sacramento. So that's where we go. There's a lot of associations in Sacramento. And because Fresno is centrally located and more affordable, and has better weather, or great weather, um, people get higher attendance for their conventions because of the location. So on this next page, I would like to just show you very quickly a couple of things. I want to share a few 30-second commercials with you so that you can, if you haven't seen them, you can see some of the advertising that we're doing on behalf of, of the cities of Fresno, of Fresno County. And also, if you haven't been to playfresno.org, which is the website, uh, we're going to show you the home page real quick here. Um, yeah, home page. And, um, and then I would really love for you to go onto our website and, and uh, really take a look at it and, of course, give us any feedback you might have. Hopefully it's coming up. There it is. So as you can see, it's very beautiful. What we have here in Fresno is beautiful, and we have everything every other large city has to offer. So I just wanted you to, to take a look at that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and have Danny uh, play the commercials. We have, been, we have broadcast um, in, Fox, in Fox LA uh, network, also the um, Northwest um, cable network, I'm sorry, um, and also to our direct flight cities. So um, some of our direct flight cities like Spokane, you, you know, that area, Portland, Seattle, Boise. And then we also um, have uh, advertised locally a lot because we still found that a lot of people in our own area don't know what we have to offer. And we want them to have a sense of pride of what we have and be able to share that wherever they're at in their jobs too. So I'll show these real quickly if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Intimate to elaborate, traditional to unique, centrally located in California, Fresno has the facilities to make your next meeting, convention, or event one to remember. Whatever your needs, it's sure to be a success with indoor and outdoor facilities that create a unique and memorable atmosphere. The Fresno Clovis Convention and Visitors Bureau can help you find the venue best suited for your event and budget. What we have to offer doesn't end there. Go to playfresno.org to see what we can do for you. Fresno, California's year-round playground. Next time you need to relax, escape the ordinary, and take a vacation in Fresno County. Explore cultural activities, dine on cuisine from our farms to your table, and wake up refreshed and renewed in one of our many quality hotels. Tour award-winning wineries throughout the county and be part of the true California experience. Oh, and their sports and attractions too. Get to know Fresno for the first time. Fresno, California's year-round playground. Go to playfresno.org and see what you've been missing.
Fresno County is a symphony of culture from all around the world. With the kind of diversity you find in the big city, but with a small town vibe. Theater, art, festivals, history, dance, music, all combining into a cultural fusion found nowhere else. Fresno County, a world to discover. Go to playfresno.org and become part of the experience. For generations, farming families like ours have turned this valley into the most productive agricultural region in the world. Sample the bounty of Fresno County, right where the food is grown and fresh and flavorful. Southern Visit a vineyard and take a wine tasting tour. Get morning picked produce at farmers markets. Relax in a restaurant where chefs prepare local cuisine to perfection. Tour Fresno County, authentic America in the heart of California. Go to playfresno.org and taste what you've been these are the rectors, Martha and Jim. They will spend their day working. That's not ours. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed those if you haven't seen them, but we're very proud of what we are um, showing people of, around this area. So the last page I have here is just some recommendations for continuing to expand our partnership. We are very grateful for the $100,000 that was, was designated for the convention sales manager. We believe that that's going to make a huge difference and, and everybody benefits from it. So I thank you all very much. And again, like I said, he has hit the ground running. Um, in fact, Gay has given him a nickname called California Chrome. Because he, mm -hmm. was, you know, he uh, was born and raised here, so he has a passion for this area and has been in the hotel industry for about 13 years. So um, anyway, so I, we really think he'll, he'll, he'll fit in very well. Um, he's had some great meetings already with the SMG team, and you know we all work with them together. But he'll, he'll obviously be working more with them. Um, there was just a couple things I wanted to touch on, and that is um, we would like to bring back. I, I know there used to be. I was uh, sat on the board for a while, sports council. Um, we would like to bring back a sports advisory board. We've had so, had some local people that are interested in maybe helping. Just you know, local people that are interested in different sports that will help bring their events here. Um, we've had success with uh, Taekwondo, which was one of them, a gentleman, local, local gentleman, gentleman, and uh, we worked together with SMG with them, and it's, it became a huge event, and so we're working with him to help grow that. But that being said, we have monies that we give these different uh, sports events. So um, in our budget, we have appropriated $80,000 between sponsorships and sports bids, which isn't a lot of money. So I would like the council to consider perhaps in the next budget maybe a little more money for sports. Obviously, if we don't get the bid, we don't spend the money. And, and we have a, and I know Bruce is really aware of it coming from, from his prior position, um, that we have a formula we use and we don't just say, oh, we're going to give you money and whatever, however many broom nights you bring in. We, act, we have a formula that we use. It has to uh, ba basically pencil out to the TOT. So if they bring in enough money uh, in TOT tax, to cover that bid or more, then that's, that's kind of in a nutshell, I would say, how, how that works. Um, we also produce a visitor's guide, and um, that is getting to be expensive. We were able to kind of offset the cost before with the advertisements, but that's you know, kind of gone away a bit. So we're working on trying to figure out how to pay for the next visitor's guide. Um, I think that's it. Um, I just want to say thank you again, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Thank you, Layla. This is uh, Councilmember Brandau's workshop, so I will turn it over to him. And I did make, uh, I wanted to make one announcement. We will not be going out to the public on this item as we will not be voting on the workshop. Uh, so I wanted to make that, that uh, point clear. This will be a council Councilmember discussion. Right on. Thank you, Council President. Um, thank you, Layla, and thanks for bringing your crew. And even though um, our system didn't push the commercials through all the way and there were little breaks, I, I still think they were wonderful commercials. So those commercials are playing in areas around the country that are easily connected to Fresno through flights and stuff like Boise. We might play these commercials in Boise 
and tempt them to come to the valley with a convention or something right. like that. And that's our, our hope is as our, our budget grows, you know, especially with the T bid next year growing another half percent. That's a significant amount to our budget. Can you talk so in the? Uh, to go to, can oh, you sorry. Talk in the so we're hoping to go to even more direct flight cities because obviously we want them to also be using our airport and you know all that too. So. Um, we, I can't remember off the top of my head which other cities we have next, Gay. Do you? Um, our, our top flight uh, is actually LA. Mm -hmm. And then the Pacific Northwest, that's why we went to Seattle and to Portland. Okay. We have research that we constantly look at, so it depends on who's in Perfect, because that was actually going to be my next question. So, have we seen a connection between the commercials and then and then um, increased tourism from those areas where the commercials are, have been played? Well, we've definitely seen an increase um, in, overall in the um, hotel occupancy. It's been slowly coming back, but we, it definitely has uh, increased. The hoteliers are saying that they are busier. It's kind of hard to narrow down, but we have seen an increase on PlayFresno.org on our website. That's where we really look to see where yeah. those hits are coming from and we map that we have maps that right. we look at to see and that northwest area has really grown so that's wow. very cool. encouraging cool i guess we should pull for them to win the super bowl oh. but uh i don't know uh let me ask this <laughs> um have you seen uh, since the economy is beginning to move forward have you seen locally an increase in tourism and travel uh, to Fresno destinations. So what would we see with increased uh, nights per stay at hotels? That's how you would measure it. Have you, yes, have you seen that? Yes, basically, because we can't track everything. Um, we've, hoteliers don't, all, not all hoteliers track well. So we, um, we've definitely seen an increase in occupancy. I think the last time I, hear, I was here, I said, you know, we finally crossed that 60% occupancy, which hasn't been in, I don't know, 20 something years, you know, so, because, and then it dipped, of course, in 2008, nine. So that is a great sign there. And the average rate has gone up also. So um, that's really the, the best way to judge it is the occupancy tax. Okay. And then for, for people in the public that are paying attention, what is the connection between um, your organization and the Convention Center SMG group? Okay. Well, we are the Convention and Visitors Bureau, and so we, we go out and we prospect uh, conventions, sporting events, any type of group to come here and stay here and, and stay overnight and stay in hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, use the restaurants. When we bring a convention to the convention center facilities, then the, conven the convention center services them. So they, um, you know, set up the rooms and do, you know, they have their own separate contract with them. Um, the convention center, primarily, when they sell something, it's usually more of like a concert or, or um, they're charged with selling, using, selling the facilities, not necessarily for room nights. And mm -hmm. we are charged with selling conventions that bring in room nights. So, but even when they sell a concert, it really has a lot of overlap. A lot of people will come to a concert and they'll hang out maybe in Fresno for an extra day or something. Sure, so, and, and, and they we sell, hope they do. <laughs> right, and when they do even bigger events, um, like last year I went to an FCA event um, or, um, and an ag event over at Convention Center. And so when they bring, they might bring in 7,000 kids um, they would spend the night in Fresno, and I know that they did. So there oh, yeah. is a, a, a great um, interaction between your two organizations. Oh, definitely. In fact, 60% um, of the room nights that we tracked for last year, um, we put, were, were held, the, the events were held in the convention center facilities. 60%. Mm -hmm. Right on. Fantastic. So. Well, you, you've, you come to council every, it seems to me like every couple of months on another item, uh, you know, industry related might be the convention center, something that we're discussing. So the last time you came, and I don't even remember what it was, I thought to myself, you know, I would like to have an update from, from your group again. And so, so today we have this other item that was in, um, in our consent calendar, which was essentially a, a second vote of approval for spending some money in this department. And so um, now hearing from your workshop and other council members can also ask questions, but I'm going to make a motion to approve a staff's recommendation. Well, 
I'm not exactly sure we can do that just yet because oh. we're still in a workshop. Okay. So I think you have to let, it, let me close okay. down the workshop and then I, I'm going to bring that call sense. that item forward. Perfect. But I'll make sure that you have the opportunity to right. make Thank the motion. You. Council, are you done, Council Member? Yes, I'm done. Council Member uh, Capriolio. Thank you. Uh, excellent presentation. Thank you very Thank much. You. Um, on a more local level in District 4, we have the Discovery Center. Yes. And I, I think it's in your visitor's guide. It would be nice to see it on a commercial if that fits in with your agenda. But um, at the Discovery Center, we're going through a revitalization and a renewal process right now. We're developing with the Junior League of Fresno the edible garden, uh, which is uh, what you mentioned from uh, seed to table concept yes. with our youth in that particular area. Uh, we have a children's activity area, reptile room, Native American room with uh, baskets and artifacts. Uh, they do weddings there. Uh, and my favorite is there's a Gemini space capsule uh, duplicate. So I always have to go sit in the space capsule and think about uh, uh, things like that. So it's really a fun experience for everyone. So please uh, keep up the good work. Thank and you. if you could uh, incorporate the Discovery Center in there, I'd sure appreciate that. Yeah, I I'm, I'm really keep up on that because that's my favorite place to take my grandsons. Cool. You know, they yeah. can go out and catch the little crayfish and all that. You know, all that right, it has a little petting zoo feature. So, yeah, and I know it's really great that they're, you know, they've really been working on it. And um, we'll be happy to, to incorporate that anytime. Any, anything we have like that, we love to show off. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. And I, I do have to say one more thing. Um, YMCA was here in January over Martin Luther King weekend, and that was a brand new convention for us. And it took everybody working together, the city, the police department, SMG, the bureau. And it, it was a perfect example of what it takes to put on a large convention like that and or everyone working together. And I just got the final numbers, and, they, and they're coming twice a year. So it was 2,192 room nights that stayed in January on a, on a Saturday and Sunday night, which the hotels love because that's where they need business. They had 17,000 meals here at the convention center. So it was really amazing, and they're coming back in November. So uh, we're hoping this was a test year for them. So if we continue to do a great job, they were really pleased with January. Uh, we will get them hopefully for a 10-year contract is what we're looking at. So it's exciting. All right, Council Member Quintero. Hi, Leila. Hi. Uh, you, uh, it sounded like uh, whenever SMG books uh, an event, and that type of thing, they kind of do their own marketing and and set up the rooms for their folks, huh? So yes. That's um, we work together a lot, but they also have their own salesperson that, that mm -hmm. you know, goes after whatever their niche. You know, it's generally, you know, concerts and local um, graduations and things like that that they do on, on their own. So um, we do, it, we service them sometimes. It depends, I know, if they want visitor guides or that kind of thing. Then we, we, we work together a lot. A lot. So. Do you have a uh, like a storefront or space at the airport, small one, of any kind? Not a storefront. We do have a visitors uh, booth at the airport that we uh, provide all the brochures and um, uh, visitor guides and whatever they need. Uh, and we also have three screens um, at the airport that where we uh, promote all the events that are coming from our calendar. So we have a calendar of events on PlayFresno.org. So we feed that through Rhino Media, um, it's a very minimal amount that we pay a month. And it's really great because it, and, and it also welcomes, for example, if Miss California's pageant's coming in and they're flying in, we say welcome Miss California pageant. So we're working on adding more of those uh, uh, welcomes throughout the hotels. And, and actually, I'm looking at some for the convention center here, too, that will um, have a map of where people like you are here, you know, those kind of on a screen, and also welcoming the groups. So. so the city charges you for space at the airport? No, no, they don't. We, well, they probably would if you we wanted some space. You pay a minimal amount. Pardon? Um, the minimal amount is to Rhino Media. Is to what? Rhino Media. It's a company oh. that we work with that we give them the information and they make, oh, it, okay. make it happen. Yeah. I see. So can you use a bigger space at the airport? Um, I would have to ask them if I can. Oh. <laughs> Is there space to be had? Um, probably. Okay. Just asking. Okay. Um, then also um, the um, – have you had a 
chance or an opportunity to meet with the new uh, athletic director for Fresno State? Um, our sales department has. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, he seems to be pretty big on wanting to to market the area and really enthusiastic for mm -hmm. you know creating more more events and drawing bigger crowds. So he he has. Um, we work with Fresno State a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. with a lot of different departments, not well, sports, of course, but not just sports, with education. There's a lot of different, um, act, you know, associations. So we've been working with them quite a bit. And, mm -hmm. and where we are, we are at right now, actually, we're just right down the street from Fresno State. So, How, how, do you, uh, how does it work out for you for the, when we have the uh, uh, Food Ag Expo? It seems like it's growing every year and really getting a lot, you know, more national interest. How does that work in your, uh, for your uh, bureau? Um, the Food Expo, I have to say, I think it's really been the mayor's um, and city baby. administration. <laughs> yeah, the mayor's baby. Um, so we, um, I have always offered our services, and I've worked with Amy Fuentes uh, through that. Um, it's hard to remember her name's not Fuerta anymore, Fuentes. Yeah. So I always stop a minute. Um, we they she primarily puts a block of rooms at a hotel so it's kind of that part's taken care of but we are, we offer any help we can provide but that's a wonderful thing to have here period because the exposure we get from those large companies as you know is is wonderful and it it puts fresno on the map so. how far along are you on uh, the discussion of uh, creating that sports council um not very far we just started okay. talking about it yeah, I remember it didn't really get a chance to get going when we had it before, and mm -hmm. Kelly was, I think, the representative Kelly for that. Kelly Carr, yes. Yeah, it didn't really, so. there was just a lot of good things on the table for that one, mm -hmm. and it just didn't. No, I agree. Funding, I think it's very I think, important. Funding, I think, is what hurt it. The funding was right. what hurt it. But the thing is with the funding is you really, I mean, you don't spend the money if you don't get the bid, so. Uh -huh. When an event like the uh, Dixieland Jazz Society has their national event here, um, do you tie in with them, or does SMG take care of that? We uh, we do. We both do. Um, we work with we've worked with Art Droulette for many many years. I'm sure everybody knows who Art is, uh -huh. <laughs> and um, uh, we we actually have two of our staff that help out with. Um, at their table selling badges and things just part of our services we set up a table with with information but we also actually help them uh get people signed in and checked in so yeah i usually attend the uh the opening night ceremonies i've mm -hmm. done that for quite a few years and i mean it's amazing they get people from germany they get mm -hmm. uh they get them from all over the united the united states as well as the world i mean they're... they do it's a wonderful event so. uh -huh. okay Thank you very much. Keep up Thank the good you. work. Thank Bye. you. Councilmember Brand. Hi, Layla. Hi. Um, how are you guys doing as far as the uh, relationship and uh, cooperation with SMG? Um, we're doing well, very well. Um, we, um, you know, we've always worked together, but having this designated person, I think, really has. Um, been a very positive um, thing even though you know we've always sold the convention center facilities I think it just makes it feel more you know whatever and Gay has been wonderful and uh, because she also uh, directs sales business the salespeople and the business sales development and so mm -hmm. she has really gone in and, and sat down with Claudia the director of sales with SMG and with the salespeople and they've just had lots of meetings and conversations and um, so that's been very positive. So you believe the decision we, we, to fund the one position has really helped out? I do. Okay. I, yeah, I thought that. Was just, uh, I do. From last year, I saw a little disconnect, and it's good that things are improving. And your funding level, wasn't the city, I believe, 600000 800000 city manager, a couple of years ago? We used to give about 600000 plus. Yeah. It was $1.2 million, actually. Right. Yeah, and that yeah. quit, I believe, in 2010. Yes. Yeah. And I, I remember... Talking to Stan Oaken, you know, a long time ago about Fresno being the lowest funded CVB per capita in, 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 of any big city in, in California. We really have a lot of stuff here from national parks and uh, other attractions that we never really have the market, do we, the money to properly market that. Correct. And I know that, has, in your opinion, has a T-bid worked out where you guys, I think it was like about $1.5 million dollars. 
It will be next year, um, uh -huh. or a little more than that. Um, currently, we're at a million dollars. Our budget is at a one million, and that includes some mem membership. So our T bid in 2014, we ended up with about 970. I think it was 976 thousand. Mm -hmm. So um, when we add that half a percent next year, that'll c increase. But we are definitely a T bid is really mm -hmm. supposed to be a supplement funding, not our whole funding. So, and right. we we're competing with Sacramento who has six million dollars, and you know, those. I mean, I think. Right. So. I think it's sometime in the future, you know, I mean, I don't know when, city manager's better positioned to know, we should consider, you know, our involvement and uh, contribution, because I believe there's a, there's a net payoff to the city uh, if, it's, if it's done right. Um, and the TOT tax has been pretty flat, right, the last four or five years, so we're not seeing a, a rise, but um, I know there's things like in my district, uh, the Shenzhen Gardens, which have this new bonsai collection mm -hmm. for People like in Japan and Korea are really big attraction that uh, we need to have the money to reach out and get those people here. And a lot of people are coming in the bus, just driving out to Yosemite and miss a lot of local attractions. Um, right. So I think there's a lot of work and a lot of potential for what we're doing. Definitely. So thank you for keeping us educated on what you're doing. And um, maybe the discussion on funding can happen this, this budget year. Good. And I will reach out to you on the Bonsai Association because we're actually bidding on that right now. Good. We're working with uh, DeWitt. Mm -hmm. um, can't think of her last name. I, she's a local person. Sally? Pardon me? Sally? No, it was, uh, her first name is DeWitt. Oh, okay. I can't think. I'm sorry, her last name. But we, mm -hmm. um, she's a, a, another, what I call local heroes, people that live here and really want to bring associations they're involved in here. Right. So we're trying to, to get that. Okay. So. Thank you, Layla. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Council President. I, uh, I had a few questions, but I'll skip mine. I think uh, my colleagues have covered it. I just wanted to make a brief comment and, and say how much uh, I think this council values our tourism industry, and, and thank you all for your hard work. I agree with a lot of the sentiment here. Uh, you guys are doing a good job with not a whole lot of resource coming from us, and you. you know we obviously need to talk about that. But I can tell you that, that just uh, visiting some of the places I've visited in the last few years, we don't have enough appreciation for how much a tourism economy, how much tourism can do for for a local economy. And I think that if we start making those strategic investments, we'd see some pretty big payoffs. So hopefully, this is the beginning of a uh, well the extension of a, of a of a strong relationship so thank with you. that we will we will close the workshop i don't see any other council members thank, thank you Layla, you. for a really good presentation um and then we we'll bring up item 1c which is the one council member brandau pulled uh, and, I, and i will uh turn it over to you council member brandau and, and again i just pulled this item. i just pulled this item so that we could uh, vote on it together after hearing this workshop because they were so closely related. So I'm, I'm just going to now that we've heard the, the workshop, make a motion to approve staff's recommendation. Okay. We have the first and the second. And I'm going to take this item out to the public uh, to see if there are any, any persons in the public that would like to comment on item 1C. Okay. Sir, are you wanting to comment on this item right here? No, it's a different oh, okay. subject. I'd like to okay, no problem. Thanks. All right, uh, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the dais. We have a, I don't have any council members punched up, so we have a motion. We have an appropriate second. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? All right, item passes 7 0. Thank you so much. All right, moving right along, we will now move to item 2A. Uh, this is the submission for informational purposes, the comprehensive annual financial reports, the CAFR. So, staff. Good morning, Council President Baines and Council members. I'm Stan McDivitt. I'm the Retirement Administrator for the City of Fresno's two retirement systems. And also with me today is Kathleen Riley Brown, who's my Assistant Director. And Kathleen uh, does the heavy lifting on the comprehensive annual financial reports, oversees the investment compliance program and our accounting functions. Uh, what we're here today is just to submit this for informational purposes. I'd, like to just give you a very short overview of what uh, is involved with the retirement systems and then feel free to interact or ask questions as I go. We can handle those on an ongoing basis. Um, in general, the retirement systems, the retirement boards and staff administer uh, and fund the benefits that you, the council and the labor group uh, negotiate. 
So we don't set those benefit levels. We do set the funding rates that go along with that on an actuarial basis. We oversee the investments of $2.5 billion of investments within the two city trusts. Um, we have a, a total client base of 5,846 active members and retirees that we service and administer with a staff of 11 people. That also includes the investment operations. We have uh, grown in the last year a lot. We've grown by $316 million net. The prior year it grew by $207 million, the two portfolios, and they've been good years. Um, if you look at the city's perspective on it, you've contributed $30 million to the two pension funds last year, $32 million the year prior. Um, you might ask why it went down. It goes down relative to body count, how many people you have on your payrolls. So it moves around relative to that kind of a number, and then it has a smaller movement in terms of rate movements. And those would be con contribution rate movements. Uh, the employees put in $15.2 million, so about half of what the city put in. And the prior year was $15.3 million. Also, um, you should look at the back end of what goes out of the retirement systems. We paid benefits last year of $99.9 .9 million dollars. The year before, $97.6 million. So it is a big operation in terms of the dollars involved and the activities that go along with it. Um, I think it's important to update you on the actuarial status, and this is typically the good news when it comes to our systems, unlike many systems. On a market value basis, so that's the market value of the $2.5 billion of investments, the fire and police system is the, actually the highest funded public system in the state of California. It's funded on, an, on a market value basis, 124.4%. That is very high relative to other pension systems. The employee system, 114.3%. We tend to look at things on an actuarial smooth basis, so we smooth the gains and losses over five-year periods. The fire and police is 113.6, and the employee system is 104.6 on a smooth basis. So the assets are there at the higher levels, the 124 and the 100 and. Uh, 14 uh, percent. Um, in my report on page three, I have got some rates for you just to kind of show you and keep you abreast of the contribution rates the city pays. And uh, I've shown you FY14, FY15, and recently adopted FY16 rates. These would be city contribution rates. And there's a trend here where they're trending up for the most part. And the reason behind that is two years ago, the retirement boards lowered the actuarial assumed investment return from 8% to 7.5. And they implemented that rate change over a three-year smoothing basis to kind of help the city step into that rate increase. And what you're seeing here is a rate that's slightly going up. However, in FY16, because of the surplus funding status of the fire and police system, there's actually $700,000 of credits that are reducing your contributions for Net the next fiscal year, so 16, starting in July. That's the good news. Um, I think investment returns are an interesting topic, and I kind of want to spend a couple minutes on that, actually. Last year, we returned 17.58%. Uh, we assume and target 7.5%. So that is a really huge number, a big return on the equity yeah. markets. And we returned 1373 over the last five years. That indicates almost double our anticipated rate. That's an indication of a reversion to the mean that is likely to occur over the next few years. If you look at our 10-year number, it's 7.64%. That includes a major market correction, one of the worst we've seen in the history of the markets. That was FY fiscal year 08-09, where the portfolio was down 20%. Uh, it rallied back, and if you average out the 10 years, you get an average of 7.64. So over that period, we've achieved it. The one message I like to deliver, and people, people who don't like defined benefit plans tend to target short-term windows of interest rates. You can look at interest rates at points in times, but you must group market cycles together. A simple example, you couldn't take the rise in the 90s of the tech bubble without looking at the market corrections in the early 2000s. They, they just don't go together. In one case, you'd be talking huge double-digit numbers, and then you'd be talking negative numbers in the early 2000s. When you smooth all that out and you look at our system over 20 years, you've got a 9.19% return. 25 years, 9.16% return. 
those are large returns. We wouldn't anticipate that going forward. In fact, our consultants anticipate returns over the next five years, maybe in the six to seven range. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to, to average the seven and a half anticipated. But we're fortunate enough to have a surplus position in the systems. And I would argue that strongly that over a long 30-year horizon, which is where we tend to look at things, we will make those kinds of numbers in the long run. And in the short run, we have surplus to cover us. And that's the value of having that surplus. It's not there to spend. It's there to take the ups and downs of the investment markets. And you are in a fortunate position to do that. Um, I thought you might want to hear a couple of numbers on the membership. It's interesting. 134 new members went into the employee system last year. There were 38 separations. 78 members retired out of that system. There's one disability under the age 55. Four individuals came back from layoffs and went to work. And unfortunately, three active members died during the year. That's a little unusual. Anyhow, there was a net change of 18 people in that system. In the fire and police system, there were 19 new members. There were five separations, a refund, 16 retirements, nine disabilities under the age 50, and a net change of a negative or a minus 12. That's a, a little bit of an overview. Um, that's kind of the big picture I wanted to paint for you. I'm happy to address any questions you may have about the systems. I think we're in great status going forward. Um, I would think markets will be a little light the next three or four years while the Fed raises rates. That's what we're anticipating. Uh, when the Fed raises rates, that has a negative impact on fixed income. So your fixed income investments tend to go down a little bit, or it forces you into shorter duration investments. So we think we'll ride through that fairly easily. But we look forward to that because on the back end, you've got higher rates, a higher yield curve, and your fixed income investments do much better. Any questions? You know what we're going to do? We're going to go out to the public stand, and then when I bring it back, uh, I already see a council member punched up, so I'm sure we have a couple questions. <coughs> All right, we will now take this item out to the public. <coughs> Are there any members of the public that would comment on this item? Now would be the time to do so. <coughs> Please state your name and address for the record. I'm 5150. Everybody knows what that is. Uh, the main thing, I try to go, f say, I go to the game to go down to the Grizzly game. I get there at 7 p.m. I take a taxi or ride a bike or some other vehicle to get there. But the bus service won't run after 10 p.m. in the game or hockey. And it's 11, so I have to walk home or take the bus. And sometimes I usually live in Black Sons here. And sometimes I have to walk home. There's no problem getting there until I get home by the facts. And no bus service because you guys did it as well. And you look at the old transit uh, receipts, not the new ones, but the old one. Actually, it was at bed night on the old ones before they changed the color to blue. And that's the, my biggest problem. Another one you guys might remember is in February, in the middle of the month, you might want to have a bus go for you. Fresno and Delary, uh, the Delary Far Show in the middle of uh, uh, February every year between Tuesday through Wednesday and Thursday is a farm show. And it's $15 each for each. Uh, Day and it's 45 the way it was a year for the big farm show. I went to Larry in Fresno. Nobody not mentioned about the farm show to Larry. It's one of the biggest farm shows in Fresno. And not many, many Fresno County. I have a time getting a bus there. They a bus, in other words, trying to get me Fresno and Visaya. There's one in Hanford and one in Burford. Madera, you go to Valley Toronto, you have one in Madera. But I like to see one between. And then on the TV, I'm always see that for channel 26. I take the bus, take the ground, huh? I, never, I just, I really don't, because I was the driver. Sir, thank you, thank you. That's my comment, and that's my, the main issue, is you take extra money, and the bus is something that's overcrowded, especially on the 30. The other ones are not so bad. Another suggestion is, during the holidays, make Blackstone, and all the business, uh, this is good for the business, say we want to go to a River Park. So you want to go north of River Park, or one-way traffic only near Holloway and turn the city way going one-way towards, uh, I'm sorry, this is one corner point. We go uh, north towards uh, <coughs> River Park. We'll have all the traffic go towards River Park. We go home, have it go towards uh, Moreau or Blackstone and the south. And, and you, uh, during the holidays, I say the, the uh, say New Year's, Christmas, or no, uh, 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 towards July. So you know the big holidays. So we don't have a traffic jam. So you go north. Go to River Park, you go back on Fresno Street 
I'm Ro I'm Del Del Fred. Any questions? I'll let me ask you. That's all. That's all. My call. My name is Jeffrey, and remember, don't and then, oh, try to work to Larry, okay? and don't forget the fire show. Have a bus go between Fresno and to Larry those three days, and maybe you guys can talk about the to Larry. Uh, for, uh, and by say, have a meeting with them also, so you guys can. My biggest problem is getting the other two. You know, the bus. We like the facts, but have a fast bus. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Do we have any other members of the public that would like to comment on this item? All right, seeing none, I will bring it back to the dais. Councilmember Brand. Thank you, Council President. Um, let me first say all these arcane numbers that are being thrown out are really, really important. This is, this is the reason that Fresno, the primary reason, in my opinion, never got over the edge as far as bankruptcy was a very strong and well-managed pension system that did in the cities like San Bernardino and Stockton and others was primarily the other reasons but one of the major reasons was an you know, underfunded pension system. So I want to thank Stan and his staff and, and our retirement board for you know, doing a great job for the past 25 years. Would you come up, Stan? And Basically, uh, as far as you know, the, the impact on the city, you know, we're getting a slight increase on our cost to the city employees, but a bigger decrease from the police and fire. So the net effect is I think we're saving about $300,000, roughly, on the city's share of the pension for 2016. Yeah, it's almost 700000 on the fire well, you, and police yeah, system. Yeah, for the police. But, so there's a net a next savings, correct? Yes. Okay. That's a reduction in the city contribution cash flow. Right. And on the, uh, the police and fire, did the high level of, of attrition that we had in the police department, did that have any impact at all on, on the figures? No, that, that actually doesn't affect the pension. Mm -hmm. from a, we look at it from a normal contribution rate and being fully funded. Uh, we're, in, we're in a position where that doesn't really matter. Right. We're, what matters to us is mortality, how mm -hmm. long they live. Right. That's the important part for us. So that we've got the normals rate, normal rate set so we fund. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the big picture for us is, in any pension system, by the way, it's a, it's a big picture issue, is if you don't fund the normal cost as you go mm -hmm. and it's not there to earn the investment return, you will have massive shortfalls. Right. So the, the way the pension systems work, about 25% of future payouts come from contributions of members in the city. Mm -hmm. And 75% comes from investment return. Investment return. Which right. is why it's so critical to fund it correctly as you go. Right. And for a long time, we were at 8.5%. And, and I know in my eight and tenure, a yeah, and eight and a quarter, our mm -hmm. tenure, and with about two years ago, we dropped it to 75 Correct. Right. And on a comparative basis, is CalPERS about seven or seven and a quarter now? CalPERS, um, the, the interesting part with CalPERS is. When you look at an investment return assumption, it's made up of a real return assumption and an inflation assumption. Their inflation assumption is actually lower than most systems because mm -hmm. they're kind of capping a lot of the COLAs at 2%, cost of living increases. And their real return is actually higher than many systems. Mm -hmm. So ours is 3 and a quarter percent inflation to get to our, our real so return. So we use about 3.5% about for inflation? Is that what we use? Inflation on percent? our assumption is 3 and a quarter. Okay. I, I can see that possibly going to 3% in the future in discussions with our actuary. That so our net return is r roughly 4% after inflation. So, the assumption currently is 4 and a quarter. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know return. that when you gave the figures of you know, the 25-year figure you know, and the, the 20, mm -hmm. that on the, the last 10 years has been 7.64, which is fairly close where we're at right now, right? Yes, that is okay. correct. Um, and on the funding, the funding levels, you said... The city employees on a market basis are about 105 percent, and the police and fire about 113, 114 percent. But those are actuarial smooth basis. 124 okay. percent on market value for fire and police, and 113.6, I think, for right. the employee system. So, on a comparative basis in the state of California, does anybody match that? There are a few systems that might mm -hmm. be now be in the 80 percentile range. Mm -hmm. That would probably be about the highest. Right. And most systems are in the high 70s right now. Okay. And looking closer to home, 
Where is Fre Med Fresno County at right now? Are there unfunded pension liability? Well, last I remember, it's a little over a billion dollars of unfunded liability. Yeah, and any uh, and about a half a billion in bond debt. There's about yes, okay, about five hundred so million in pension bond. That's a pretty scary scenario. That equals high contribution rates. Is yeah, the downside to it. Our rates are collectively about thirty percent, county employee and city, correct? Um, if you look at it, actually, you know, the interesting thing, people don't talk much, the fire and police system has a blended rate of uh, 20, mm -hmm. a little over 20, and the employee system is a little over 11. On a blended basis, it's about 16% in right. the ballpark, maybe a little under 16%. That's the total blended city contribution rate. Right. Whereas if you're looking at many counties or pension systems with unfunded liabilities, it's not uncommon to be in the 50% range. I remember when uh, Member Baines and I looked at the, uh, we were looking at the comparison of the, of the, the deputy sheriffs and the city PD, my recollection that the deputy sheriffs were right around 50 percent pension costs. I'm sure they're in the 50-something 50, 50 percentile, right. yes. And you figure on a budget, if we had to add double what our pension costs, we're paying which is about $30 million, that would have a huge impact on our general fund. Yes, it would. Okay. So, again, I want to this reemphasize how important it is to have a well-managed pension system that has sustained the city for many, many years and allows us to do, we got other restrictions, but this is one that we continue to do well. And again, I want to you know, thank. Some, I, I, it occurred to me a couple of weeks ago when I was at a meeting out of, out of town that we've been fully funded now for 20 years. That's something no one in the state could even comment about. Even those that around 2000 approached 100% funding, that's at the end of the tech bubble, um, there were systems around 100% at that point in time, but no mm -hmm. one can say that they've been fully funded for 20 years. Right. Did this, did this require an action, city attorney, a, a motion to accept the CAFR report? This an act requires that, a motion? That would be the recommendation, yes, okay. just to accept. So I'll make a motion that we accept purposes. the recommendation. Thank you, Stan. Thank you. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. No other council members are punched up. Stan, I, had a, I, I just had a question. Um, council Member Brand actually answered or asked a couple of uh, questions that I had, but I, I wanted to, to, just, to just ask, are we overfunding our system? I mean, it's... No, you are not overfunding your system. Um, and as I said before, I think it's really important to recognize that the surplus that is there is there to protect against mount our market downturns. Mm -hmm. And as an example, because we are overfunded, you're getting a surplus credit this year, the city's general fund of approximately 700000 going into FY16. So we amortize the surplus down. That's part of the policies within the retirement board to bring it down. But we bring it down very slowly so it's there to absorb the market fluctuations. Right. And I and I just wanted to ask. I know a, a lot of this uh, this pension uh, discussion is is you know dealing with actu actuaries is, is really complex, and I always struggle with with uh, you know us being funded at 124 percent, 113 percent, 106 percent to to just make sure we can explain uh, publicly that we're not overfunding our system, that this is actually you know more along the lines of responsible management, um, because we get that question sometimes. So thanks, Dan, and. Appreciate it. So we have a first and a second. Uh, no other council members up. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Item passes 7-0. Thank you, staff, very much. All right, we move on to item 2B, a resolution authorizing the submittal of a grant application to the State of California Department of Housing and Community Development and acceptance of 2014 housing-related parks program grant funds in the amount of $1,305,825. Manuel. Good morning, Mr. President, members of the Council. I'm Manuel Molinero, the Director of the Fresno Parks Department, and I'm here today asking or recommending that you adopt the attached resolution authorizing the submittal of an application for, Calif for the California Department of Housing and Community Development Housing-Related Parks Program grant funds for recreation improvements at Vinland, Mosqueda, Frank H. Ball, and the California Elm Gymnasium. Um, Proposition 1C was created through the Housing and Emergency Shelter Trust Fund Act of 2006. Uh, the state of California has allocated $35 million statewide uh, for, these grant, for this grant program. 
this uh, city of Fresno is requesting one, one point three, uh, $1,305,825 uh, for park improvements uh, based on the criteria that has been set forth uh, in, this in this grant uh, program. Uh, the state housing related parks program uh, was initiated in order to encourage communities uh, to establish affordable housing in either their cities or counties. Uh, if we are fortunate enough to receive all of the monies based on their criteria, uh, the four parks that are being uh, recommended would receive some dramatic improvements in the coming year. Uh, that concludes the uh, that that concludes my report. Uh, are there any questions? All right, thanks, Manuel. Now, I'll now take this item out to the public. Do we have any members of the public that wishes to comment on this item? All right, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the dais. I have Member Quintero. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Molinero, I just want to uh, thank you for the, the good job that you've done since you, uh, the short time you've been here. Uh, really appreciate, uh, you know, you looking at, at and addressing the needs uh, specifically uh, for us in District 5 at uh, Mosqueda Community Center. Really appreciate that. I know the the seniors that attend there for the Hot Meals program. I know you work with the uh, Reading and Beyond folks there. And uh, just all the good activities that are going on. And uh, I appreciate you seeing the, the needs for improvements uh, and updating that we're going to need. So I just want to thank you. It's a good application. I think it's going to help everybody. So. Very much, uh, Councilman. Really Cantel. appreciate it. Motion to approve, Mr. President. All right. And uh, we have a motion by Member Cantello, a second by Member Brand. And, and I just want to echo Council Member Cantello's uh, sentiment. Uh, really, man, I think you came in, hit the, you know, you hit the, hit the ground running here. We appreciate all the effort and the work. You, you know, you all have made some, uh, uh, you're responding to the public need. So obviously, infrastructure improvements in these parks is very important. So I want to thank you and the staff for, for going after this and putting it together. We're going to cross our fingers. Council Member Brando. Thank you, Manuel. Uh, good presentation. Um, I, you rolled through it really quick. I think I missed it. What are the four parks that this grant is going to cover? Uh, Vinland, Mosqueda, Frank H. Ball, and the uh, uh, gymnasium over at California and Elm. Gymnasium. And then... So what types of what you know what types of projects does this specific grant cover at those parks? I imagine each park has different needs, different. but in general, um, it, it really varied uh, depending on the needs of the park. For example, uh, over at Vinland, we're looking at doing some significant park improvements to the uh, restroom facilities, repair leaky roofs, roofs uh, put in walkways. Mosqueda, uh, they've got a very dated uh, auditorium. Uh, and uh, an electrical panel that basically has the old glass fuses that mm -hmm. is on the verge of um, being totally non-functional. So we're talking about upgrading all of that. We're also looking at doing some significant uh, park improvements on the outside as far as upgrading the irrigation system. Uh, Frank H. Ball, uh, it's probably, I would list the swimming pool at Frank H. Ball is probably one of my better swimming pools, but that pool was built in 1943. Mm -hmm. um, it's in dire need of repair and upgrades. Uh, we're in the process right now of bringing in some co uh, consultant to, um, to give us some direction as to uh, uh, making significant improvements in there. Uh, this money would probably be not, would not be enough to do all of the improvements, but at least it would help us to stabilize uh, that swimming pool and have it ready for this uh, coming summer. Uh, the California Elm uh, gymnasium. Uh, when it was built, they never put in a um, a uh, children's play area. Uh, there are a lot of young a uh, lot of young families that live in that community. So we are going to be putting in a play area. We're also uh, looking at putting in a scoreboard. You have a beautiful gymnasium with no scoreboard there, and then doing some some upgrades to that facility that n were never included when it was first built. So that's just kind of a brief overview of what we're planning on doing with the money. Yeah, fantastic list. I just wanted some clarity. So it sounds like this money is being sp spent on hard assets. I mean, real improvements to structures and that type of thing. Within some parks that really need the, need the upgrades. Fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. That's all. Member Cantero. Yeah. I just wanted to add one more thing. I, um, 
Uh, the gentleman whose place you took, I know his hands were full and he was multitasking a lot. So, <laughs> Bruce, you did a good job when you were there, too. So I just wanted to make that notation. I know your hands were full. So yeah. thank you. Those were big shoes to fill. <laughs> Bruce? Do you mean size-wise? <laughs> yeah. I, I just also, um, the earlier conversation about the Prop 84 dollars, the grand dollars we've gotten from Martin Ray Riley and the UAP, the Cultural Arts District Park, and now the item is before you today. I want to public acknowledge Irma Perez. Irma is a bulldog when it comes to these grant dollars. Um, Manuel, I feel for you because I know when I was there, she was just like, we got to go after this, we got to go after this, we got to go after this. But the item that you have before you today and in the, and the celebration that we're going to have on Saturday with the, the dedication of, of Martin Ray Riley could not have happened without a lot of the hard work of this, this individual. And I just want to publicly acknowledge her and thank her for, for all of her efforts and commitment to the Parks Department. You can tell when you talk to her, improving the green space is a passion. It, it's not a job. It's a passion, and, and it resonates from her every time you talk to her. So thank you, Irma. Thanks, Bruce. We appreciate that. And she that. lives in District 5. <laughs> All right, we have a, a motion and a second. All those in favor? All those, appro uh, all those opposed? All right, item passes 7-0. Listen, I think this is, we should have called today Parks Day in the city of Fresno, right? I mean, this has been a good day for parks. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, we'll now move on. We're running a little bit behind, but we're gonna move on to our 10 o'clock uh, scheduled hearing. Uh, to a hearing to adopt resolutions and ordinance amending annex number 29 of city of Fresno community facilities district number 11. Final track back number 5626. Staff. Good morning, Council Member, Council President Baines and uh, members of the Council. I'm Andrew Benelli with the Public Works Department. This is a public hearing to consider amending a uh, community facilities district uh, number 29. It's part of uh, uh, CFD number, district 11. This is a, a project that was started back in 2008. It stalled probably because of the recession. It's now a new developer. They'd like to go forward. Uh, we're asking the council to approve uh, an amendment to the, to the district. And we have received the ballots back from the owners. They were all in support of the uh, amendment to the district. All right, thank you. Glad to answer any questions. All right, we will now take this item out to the public. Do we have any members of the public wishing to comment on our 10 o'clock item? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the diocese. This is a member of Contello's district. Thank you, Mr. President. So Mr. Benelli, the one person that voted was uh was in favor, huh? <laughs> no, never mind. I, I, I know what Yes, they were in favor. <laughs> okay. Excellent. 100%. Motion to approve. All right. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. Uh, no other council members up. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? All right. Item passes 7 0. Uh, so before we move on to unscheduled communication, I actually forgot to do something a couple earlier in the meeting. I think, I believe I forgot to approve the minutes from the previous meeting. So uh, council is gonna bear with me. I'm still working out the kinks on this. So we're gonna go back in our agenda and approve the minutes from the previous meeting. So do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the previous meeting? All right, we have a motion from uh, council member Soria and a second from council member Capriolio. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? All right, now we have official minutes from the last meeting. Thank you guys. Um, we have, uh, we're going to move to unscheduled communication. Um, so I have a Wayne Warkin, Warkinton, thank you. Uh, I apologize. Now, sir, I know you wanted to speak on item 1J. You, you came a little bit after we'd already uh, approved. Yeah, but you, you're welcome to speak now and, and give, us, give us your thoughts on that. All right, thanks. I uh, didn't know what time the council meeting uh, started. The article in yesterday's Fresno B didn't say, and I tried to call, actually called at 8 o'clock in the morning, and uh, nobody answered the phone, and I called a little after 8.30, and, uh, and they said, well, gave me another number, and I called then, and they said, well, it had started at 8.30, so I got down here as quick as I could, but unfortunately, I guess I missed that one. Anyway, my name is Wayne Workington. I uh, started working for the Fresno Grizzlies in 2002, shortly before Grizzly Stadium uh, opened. I worked for the Grizzlies from 2002 to 2007 as an usher, usher captain, 
uh, backup uh, manual scoreboard operator, official scorer, uh, security guard, and ticket taker. And since 2013, I've been the Grizzlies' uh, backup official scorer. If anyone's skeptical of that statement, I'd be happy to provide you with uh, the email exchanges between uh, Chris Coots, who is the Grizzlies' uh, media relations director who hired me for that, and uh, myself. Uh, I assume that you probably uh, approved the uh, resolution to sell the stage for less than one-tenth of what, uh, what it was bought for. I want to mention that uh, yesterday's B article, the person that wrote it apparently was not very well informed and uh, at one point seemed to suggest that it possibly had only been used for one uh, event. I'd like to mention some of the events that I worked as, as an usher there where that stage was used. And uh, they included uh, two B.B. King uh, Blues Festivals in 2002 and 2003. The 2002 one included uh, B.B. King, the Fabulous Thunderbirds, the MoFo Party Band, and one or two other groups. The 2003 concert included B.B. King, uh, Jeff Beck, and a couple of other uh, bands. Uh, the, uh, the event mentioned in the B, which included the uh, uh, Purple uh, Kids mascot, it was another event that I worked. That was an all-day children's uh, program there. Uh, does that say I didn't? You have one minute. I have one minute? Okay. Also, um, the uh, Def Leppard concert, which was in about 2006. And uh, all of those, and also an all-day Mexican uh, music festival, all of those drew huge crowds, and uh, tons of beer were sold at uh, all of them except for the uh, kids' program. And uh, I want to mention that uh, the reason really why, when the stadium was built, it was intended to be for multi-purpose concerts and ball games, and that's because John Carberry was the CEO. He had many years of experience as a promoter. Once the board pushed him out, uh, they lost uh, that. He, they did bring him back to uh, be the promoter for the Depp Lefford concert in about 2006. Uh, the problem it wasn't that the, something was wrong with the stage, it's that the Grizzlies lost their promoter. There's a lot of people they could have brought. For instance, I've uh, promoted uh, book performers for decades. Steve Ono books all the performances for the Folklore Society. Uh, Fred Martinez with Club Fred. A lot of people that you could have brought in, the Grizzlies could bring in as a uh, promoter rather than selling the stage. In a couple of years, you're going to say, we need a new stage. It's going to cost $600,000, $800,000. And you can say, we wish we hadn't sold the old one for $25,000. That's hey, what I have to say. Hey, thanks, Wayne. I wanted to just give you a bit yeah. of information. If you ever want to find out about our council meetings, they're all listed on the website, the City of Fresno website. If, for whatever reason, you, you call and you don't get anyone down here, you can always see our meetings posted on the website. All right. Thank you, all sir. Right. Thank you. Thank you for comments. All right. Wayne to thank you for clearing up the facts from that article in yesterday's newspaper. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now we'll be moving on to our closed session. City Attorney, is, are there any announcements for our closed session? Yes, for closed session, we have anticipated litigation, City versus Pulte Group. I would not expect any announcement afterwards. All right. Do we have any members of the public that would like to comment on our closed session before we go in? All right. Thank you. Then we will adjourn the closed session.